buonasera, benvenuti, io sono Stefano Carniti e sono il titolare di Simulation Project. Abbiamo organizzato quest'oggi insieme con il Big Project, una giornata dedicata al nostro amico Thomas che ci ha diciamo, accompagnato da questa mattina in una lunga giornata. Abbiamo anche il comandante Dave che è venuto a trovarci e che si è così gentilmente reso disponibile per una, per una breve intervista. Proseguirà in inglese chiaramente, per cui spero per tutti sia un momento simpatico dove poter avere anche magari qualche buona esperienza da parte di chi ieri di pilota quotidianamente. La parola a Thomas che ringrazio chiaramente per essere venuto. Grazie. Grazie, grazie Stefano. Thank you Stefano. So Dave, basically here we are, you know, we are friends in a couple of years and you know my story and I know your story, I think. So Stefano, you know my, I, you know, I did my own kind of school. So tell me you're from the States, you fly with an airline right now. Tell me how you started. Well, I started, uh, I was from a Navy family. That was As I grew up, I saw airplanes flying around, fire airplanes, he was off aircraft carrier. So uh, as a little kid, I was interested in it. And then it was a Navy uh, ROTC pilot, where the Navy pays your way through college. So as I got through college, I had a requirement to be in the Navy. It was either be on a ship or fly off the same ship and get off of it. So I chose to fly. And uh, after I got out of college, I had to fly a seven years obligation to the Navy. So I flew off aircraft carriers for seven years, and then after that, got hired by the airlines and flew a sequence of airplanes for the last 30 years. And uh, on a layover, walked in downtown Milan and saw you. And <laughs> here we are. Yeah, here we are. Right. Yeah, you know, it's funny, you know, you know, we know each other now, we know, and uh, you know, you have a, you're a senior you know, captain, and you've been flying around for many, 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 many years. You're getting old now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it's, 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 it's nice, you know, may, maybe without to being too much, you know, you know, let's say political or whatever, you know, tell me a bit your, you know, what you think about, you know, me having, no, oh. no it's good to hear from somebody, you know, or, or anything. Like, or off you know, <laughs> Both, I'm not, you know. Well, there's a, kin Very brief. there's a kinship and a fraternity of flying that I don't think, that the, the way you get into it, to me, doesn't necessarily matter, and that you... Everybody has to pay their dues somehow. You know, I did it going through the Navy. You did it by flying simulators any way that you could. But you would never have passed. As, that was your way to enter the profession. You would never progress if you didn't have the skill to do it. Because you're required to do your simulators and your check rides and everything else like every other captain, which you did. So from that standpoint, you clearly had the skill to do it, or you would not have progressed and lasted as long as you did. This will cost me a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's good to see, you know, uh, your opinion. You know, I never, you know, try to have that, but it's good to have, to have that, you know, you're in America, you're American, and you have a lot of military background, and you have, as I told you, you know, a lot of hours, you know, many, many hours. You've been... 25,000. Yeah, which is quite a lot, you know, especially, you know, you've been in the Navy, and you've been with different air, uh, you know, uh, positions with different aircraft, you've been all the aircraft, you know, basically. So I mean, it's uh, thank you to be here, you know, and uh, I'm not, I don't want to be <laughs> an interviewer in this case, so I'm doing this for a big project. They've been very nice to me. I'm very uh, happy to be, you know, having, you know, with the oldest people, passion, and I think it's, you know, it's a good way to um, for understand people that, you know, whatever you do, okay, don't do it illegally, but put passion. Passion is hard work, whether you do it in Navy or whether you do it in a different way, but you know, you have to put effort. I think, you know. Am I right, Dave? You know, well, you you, rock, no, if you want to be something, you have to be, and especially a pilot, you know, a lot of study. And I lived on a ship with 6,000 guys and I had to cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so for three years. And, uh, it, but it took me two years, of, well, four years of college, and then two years of flight school, and then five years in the Navy just to get to the point to where I could fly one of these around. So if I didn't like it, then it I, I wouldn't have stuck with it. It would have been impossible because, you know, getting up at four o'clock in the morning, uh, being gone from home, missing holidays, missing kids stuff. Um, but as I told you earlier today, 6.30 in the morning flying over the, the uh, Italian Alps with the sun coming up and the Matterhorn and Mont Blanc with the sun on them, even though I've been up for nine hours, I looked and said, how many people right now on earth are doing this? Me and my two co-pilots. Literally, that's it. And moments like that make the previous 30 years, makes it all worth it. So yes, you have to have a passion and 
it takes a lot of effort and work and study and and proficiency because unless you have the aptitude to do it, you can want it all as much as the next guy, but you have to be good at it, which takes eyes, the, the, the physical skill, the manual skill, which we've seen in the news lately is a big deal, being yeah. able to process, right. process the information and fly the plane, not just be someone who pushes the buttons. So as the aviation and technology has changed, the skill sets have changed and there's always a fine balance between man and machine and what sort of qualifications is the future pilot going to need. Back when I started, it was a World War II airplane, the T-28, which didn't have anything like this. It was propeller, uh, big, huge, piston-driven airplane. You had to be good at stick and throttle. And that was the criteria. So you better like the manual stuff because you had to do that for a three-hour flight. It was, there was no autopilot. These days, you have to be both a computer operator and someone who, who plays with this. So it's an evolution. The guys I fly with now, I can see the difference in the skill set that's necessary based on the new technology, but you still need to have that passion and want to do it. And to feel it. Yeah, and you have to be able to feel it too, which of course you did. And you did. Uh, or you, or you wouldn't have, it. Or you wouldn't have stuck with it. Well, Dave, you know, this is going to be cost me a lot. So anyway, <laughs> hey, thank you. No, and thank you. Uh, thanks for telling guys here, you know, all the passion and they're they going to trust it. Yes, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.